And welcome to the latest anime news for the week ending February 6th, 2021. Let us begin, um, he said. There we are. The <laughs> annual World Cosplay Summit event will officially take place both online and in person this year. Ooh. The physical event will take place on August 7th and 8th at various uh, locations in Nagoya with the online portion, the World Cosplay Championship Video Division on a not yet specified streaming service, but probably Nico Nico. Participants will be selected through national preliminaries in their respective countries sometime between February and June. Teams of two representative cosplayers will then submit self-made videos wearing costumes they made themselves. The video entries will be officially judged during the physical portion of the event, which will also include photo shootings, stage events, and more. This is pretty interesting to me because I don't know that I've seen a cosplay event go on both both virtual and physical. Do you think it's going to work? Well, it depends how much money they're going to throw at it to make sure that the technology mm. meshes well. Because, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. as we all know, technology can go take a left turn on you when you least expect it. True. Um, but I, I think... I think a, a, if not, 2020 has taught us nothing, <laughs> it's that <laughs> you can save some money by making things virtual mm -hmm. and you're never going to replace the joy and the sort of interactivity of a live mm -hmm. being there, seeing yeah. people with your eyeballs. Yep. So I think coming up with a sort of a hybrid where it's like, OK, you know, if we can do this this way, we can maximize our connection across the, the, the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And hopefully bring a good product, please. Yeah. Please. And it's in August, right? So there's time for vaccines to get out there, for some of the yeah. travel restrictions yeah. to be eased, for there to be, you know, a a significant size of a physical in person audience. Yeah. So. Which would be the good question is and I please, I touch with please not. COVID variant. Mm -hmm. I hope that the vaccines do enough of the base work yeah. that the variant is just a slightly annoying thing, mm -hmm. but it will not impact yeah. any of that. There yeah. won't be suddenly July, like, nope, sorry, I'm going to slap everything closed again. Be like, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, we will see. Yeah. Um, he, he's, there we are. Um, always something changing. Um, Technology continues its march forward, and the anime industry is no exception. Those who rely on traditional mediums for anime, animation production will soon be losing a long-standing tool, sadly. Mitsubishi Pencil revealed this week that the company will be cutting all but one color of its 7,700 line of pencils, and noted that does not mean they have 7,700 different colors of pencils. <laughs> the line is called the 7,700 line. Um, which is often uh, also often used for hand-drawn animation due to the very fine line it draws. The company did not directly attribute the cut to sales, but to the fact that the raw materials used in making the pencils are increasingly hard to find. They've tried to make alternatives with more accessible raw materials, but have so far not been able to reach the same standard as the traditional 7700 line. The owner of Somaya Genshiro Shoten in Tokyo did comment about the sales of the line, however, the pencils are also traditionally used in blueprints and other applications requiring fine lines, but ever since architects and other industrial uses have gone digital for blueprints, the store sells, quote, about one 7700 red pencil for every 3,000 normal red color pencils. Wow. The red color will in fact be the last one produced. The line was already reduced down to four colors out of the original 12 back in 2015. The Association of Japanese Animators made a statement about the line, saying, quote, The 7700 line is an indispensable tool for animation production with a large impact on individuals and companies anticipated by the end of production, end quote. Mitsubishi Pencil thanked those who continue to use the pencils and apologized for any inconvenience this may cause people uh -huh. who used the product. I'm sure they did. It's weird to think <clears throat> that an industry would have that as a standard, right? A yeah. certain kind of pencil. But it also totally right. makes sense, right? There's some things that just work very well for what they do and that becomes the, the thing everyone uses. Um, and it's hard to imagine that that's going to be, you know, you're not going to be able to use that pencil for that thing anymore. Well, is it, 
Is it one of it's, these it's things where it's like senpai used that pencil, so I use that pencil, and senpai's pen senpai used that pencil, and that people haven't looked around and said, you know, that was a great thing that did that thing, and because it's the marketplace, there are other people that are vying for a chunk of that. Mm. So maybe there's there is something that's better that mm. you know be work the same way or at least reasonably close to that same kind of pattern that you won't be left adrift without your favorite pencil. I, I think I think it's just the natural march of technology. I I really honestly mm. believe that. I think it's just gotten to that point where it's just that's the item in this technology in this market for this thing is no longer being used as it moves forward into more and more and more CGI mm -hmm. and more computer grade CAD and stuff like that. Right. You know, getting into it and so that it becomes almost a lost art. I mean, I can see this almost as like, you know, in the anime history museum as, you know, the, here's the thing that we <laughs> did for so long and this is what we used. And I just got hand delivered to my, my dinner. Oh, my nice. Surprise. Look at that. Uh, so, so jealous. Um, mm, smells wonderful. Thank you. And, um, <laughs> and, um, uh, but I, I think it's just that one thing that you know it's it's just they're gonna be going now i i would i would venture to say that they'll probably be that oddball market that's always going to exist and that somebody out there is going to make this product mm -hmm. but it's just for the hardcore enthusiasts mm -hmm. right. later on yeah. well and that's yeah, the, that, you know like i said the marketplace yeah. you're going to have something that's going to fill that in like oh yeah that's going to be All some right. kind of money somebody's gonna be like hey me too <laughs> yeah, I got to say, right. I think Japanese industry being what it is, this probably is the best pencil. Um, you know, I, I'm sure if industry is standardized on it, like, you know, objectively, there are standards saying this is the best pencil. But I'm sure there are also other pencils out there that, you know, you right. can you can swap out to. Um, um, yeah, but it's one of those, those, you know, turning points in history in a way that, okay, that we're shifting away from... From that being a major, um, and, and again, you know, it's not that anime studios are the only ones using the pencil; it's architects and so forth, but blueprints, etc. Exactly, right. but still, it's kind of weird. So, so it's interesting. Um, moving on to uh, happier news, the upcoming Ghibli Park held a press conference on Wednesday to update fans of the park's progress and give more teases of what's to come when the park Ooh. opens next year. The presentation included new renders of ironworks from Princess Mononoke and of an almost life-sized Howl's Castle. Wow. Not Howl's Moving Castle. The castle appears to be stationary. Yeah. And visitors will be able to go inside the castle itself and walk around the bedroom and the main living area, which is really <laughs> cool. Both of these areas will be part of the second phase of the park, opening in 2023. Um, new drawings were also released of the inside of the Ghibli's big warehouse, which is set to open to the park's first phase in 2022, along with the Youth Hill and Don Doko Forest areas. So that looks pretty darn awesome, I gotta admit. When they announced Ghibli Park, like, it was cool he was gonna have all these areas. I did not expect an almost life-size Owl's Castle. I wonder, I wonder how you're gonna manage crowd flow through that. Yeah. Well, they can do it at the Ghibli Museum, right? Like, that's, that's yeah. insane, so. I'm betting they'll do the same thing that uh, like Disney does with some of its more popular Probably. parts, yeah. and you'll have a limited. Well, they did the Ghibli Museum. You have, you know, there are X number of tickets for a given slot, right? And that's the only number of people who can go through, and that's it. What's to say? Because that's why they got the mover system for the Haunted Mansion, because the right. idea initially was a walk-through house of horrors. Uh, yeah, and yeah. they sat down and looked at it and said there is you know this is going to be a disney thing and people are going to be like yay and we're never going to get people to leave yep. right <laughs> they're oh. going to just stand there be stuck in the place and it'll be packed so let's get them on a little I, ride I, I, and push them out the door if, if i went to howl's castle so there at studio, uh, studio ghibli park mm -hmm. i would be the guy who goes in there and goes turns around and goes squatter's right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so speaking of that at the ghibli museum there is a, a, a Hayao Miyazaki's desk portion oh. of that, which is all set up. And when they announced it, they announced that Hayao Miyazaki would occasionally come down and draw at the desk. Oh. And he did. And he would come down Jesus. and draw at the desk. And guess what happened? 
80 billion people for hours on end. So he's up doing that in three weeks. That audio animatronics amazing. (laughs) Don't touch the artist. Can you imagine being in that fishbowl? I mean, it was bad enough, like when at, at Disney when they had that, yeah. you know, where you walk in and see the actual yeah. people working. But mm-hmm. can you imagine being Miyazaki and just like drawing and just going, exactly. <laughs> you were going, <laughs> stop breathing heavily. <laughs> Draw me, draw me. <laughs> well, I was to say, hopefully the local crowd was probably very respectful of, oh, of sure. the artist's presence, etc. And then, you know, if we could be there, I'd be the one to be like, oh, hey, <laughs> hey, 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 over hey, here. Doodle something for me, dude. Come on, man. A shot rings yeah. out. <laughs> well, I'm sure there would be somebody who would come up very respectfully and say, "Sir, could you please leave the facility and never return?" Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <Not> like, <"Cool." laughs> exactly. Um, all right. Also, this week, uh, news stories that we want to mention, maybe talk about, maybe not. So, guys, if you want to talk about any of this stuff, please scream. Um, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, so when you so Valentine's Day is coming up, and when you think Valentine's Day, what else do you think of but cannibalistic demons? The yep. Demon Slayer manga might be officially over. That doesn't mean no more new content. This week, new short stories were announced for both the manga and the anime. To celebrate Valentine's Day, UFO Table is animating four new shorts titled Demon Slayer Academy Valentine Chapter. Uh, yeah. Um, the shorts will debut on the Aniplex YouTube channel. Sorry. Aniplex. Aniplex. On Valentine's Day Japan time, with one posted every four hours starting at 10 a.m. Wow. The final short will stream within the Kimetsu Sai online event taking place that evening, which celebrates the two-year anniversary of the TV anime. Um, uh, the event, uh, originally planned to take place in person before the state of emergency, will feature new information related to the anime series. Season 2? Um, along with the series, four main voice actors and the voice actor of Ren Goku. Um, th- there's also an art book coming with uh, three bland, brand new exclusive one shot manga, uh, plus some uh, some one shots that appeared in previous publications. Um, uh, now, while the Demon Slayer franchise doesn't show any signs of slowing down, uh, mangaka Gotuge has begun to think towards their next manga creation. In this new fan book, uh, Gotuge commented that they are thinking of writing a sci-fi romantic comedy as their next project. They said they've been re-watching old alien sci-fi movies recently. (laughs) The Japanese government plans to extend the current state of emergency for another month in nearly Uh. all the regions currently affected after consulting with a panel of experts. Um, While the overall rate of new COVID-19 infections has dropped, the ratio of older people among those infected has risen. Out of the 11 prefectures under the original state of emergency, only Togichi, north of Tokyo, will be released tomorrow as planned. <clears throat> Manga company Comic Smart announced this week it's established a new digital animation studio called Kujira, uh, but spelled Q-Z-I-L dot L-A, a play on the Japanese word for whale. Comic Smart owns the Ganma ma- manga website, which serialized the Million Doll and Armor Shop for Ladies and Gentlemen mangas, which both inspired anime series. Um, the producer, previously production IG, will serve as a new studio's producer and representative directory, director. Um, their goal is to alleviate the labor problems of, of animators while maintaining both a fast production process and a high quality of work, which sounds like pretty much what any studio would say they're going to strive for, towards, but let's hope they succeed. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll yeah. <laughs> yeah. I believe it when it happens. Right, yeah. exactly. It's like, nice words. We'll see. Um, words are free. Words are free. <laughs> right. Um, speaking of successful uh, anime, Detective Conan TV anime series will air its thousandth episode in March. Wow. <laughs> wow. To celebrate this incredible milestone, the anime's thousandth and one thousand first episodes will be a remake of the legendary God tier episode Moonlight Sonata Murder Case, which was the show's eleventh episode way back in nineteen ninety six. Um, this is this was the episode notable for Conan vowing do not le- even let the culprits die. Uh, Detective Conan's website unveiled a visual for the new remake, uh, showing a new key image, making up a collage of scenes from the original. Uh, it'll air on March sixth and thirteenth, um, and they're also streaming a video of classical pianist um, Amy Kobayashi performing Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata for the remake, 
plus there's a social media campaign underway, of course. Now, last July, Crunchyroll reached 3 million paid subscribers, and as of this week, they're celebrating the next major milestone, surpassing 4 million paid subscribers, and over 100 million registered users around the world. They also announced it's partnering with Idris and Sabrina Elba to develop a new dark fantasy series with the working title Dantai. Um, as they describe, quote, the Afrofuturistic science fiction series will be set in the city where the rise of biotechnology has created an ever-widening gap between the haves and have-nots, end quote. Okay. On February 9th, Bushiro will hold a press conference which to officially reveal their next original TV anime project titled Joran, the Princess of Snow and Blood. Uh, Netmarble revealed on Thursday that it's Seven Knights smartphone RPGs inspiring a new TV anime. It'll be titled Seven Knights Revolution, the Hero's Successor, premiering in April. Shogaku Khan announced this week a TV anime in the works for uh, Koharu Inoue's The Duke of Death and His Maid manga. Um, be animated by um, at JC Staff. Yasuki Tanaka's summertime rendering suspense manga ended this week, and along with the finale came announcements of both an anime adaptation and a real-life escape game. Um, a live action adaptation is also in the works. We can always count on fantasy and isekai light novels to provide new anime, and this week is no exception. Mato Sato and Nilitsu's unusual take on Isekai, The Executioner and Her Way of Life, is getting a TV anime adaptation. In the novel's world, Lost Ones wander into the land from the distant world of Japan. And these strange wanderers always bring disaster, so the main character, Meno, the titular executioner, is tasked with exterminating them. Sounds like oh, tourists nice. from America. Interesting, yeah. <laughs> yeah right. They there. bring disaster everywhere. <laughs> The GA Fest 2021 live stream last weekend revealed that Iskai Light Novel series <gasps> The Reincarnated Sage's alternate world life I got a second profession and became the most powerful in the world is also getting a TV anime. Uh, this is a more typical uh, Iskai story about, of an yeah. overworked corporate employee being someone into, into a game like Alternate World. The same live stream also announced another light novel TV adaptation, this one for the Genius Prince's Guide to Raising a Nation Out of Debt. Hey, how about treason? Yes, that's all the title. Um, also announced as a TV anime based on Shikoshoto's The Strongest Sage with the Weakest Crest light novel series. JC Staff animating that one as well. Uh, last up is a TV anime adaptation of Ghost Mikawa's My Friend's Little Sister Has It In For Me. You can probably guess it, the co concept for the title already. Finally, Shueisha announced on Thursday that Ichiro Oda's One Piece manga officially has more than 480 million copies in circulation worldwide as of this week's release of the 98th volume. That total includes more than 400 million copies in Japan and 80 million circulation in 42 countries and territories worldwide. Shueisha is launching a present, uh, present campaign on TikTok to commemorate the latest volume's release and will give away 10 replica art pieces from the manga by random drawing to people who post using limited time one piece effects with the proper hashtag. Hmm. 